If you want to gauge the real state of our union, look no further than your kitchen table. At least that's according to House Speaker Kevin McCarthy. Inflation has exploded. Mortgage rates have doubled. Working Americans, after inflation and taxes, have gotten a pay cut. And eggs, a staple of America's breakfast, have gone from a cheap source of protein to a luxury good. If you're eating your eggs right now, yes, you know the cost of eggs is up. In fact, it's more than double what it was just a year ago. So what are House Republicans doing about it? They are holding a series of high-profile hearings to get to the bottom of, well, not the price of eggs. Let's put it that way. Thank God for Elon Musk for allowing to show us in the world that Twitter was basically a subsidiary of the FBI. I want to assure you both Gentleman's that we time. come not to trash the FBI, but to rescue the FBI well from political capture. So I'll ask again, did you shadow ban my account? Yes or no? Again, not to the best of my recollection. So the answer is, Mr. Roth, yes, you did. So this is the committee uh, that's looking into the, quote, weaponization of the federal, gov federal government. And a Washington Post ABC News poll asked a very simple question. What do you think about this committee? Is it legitimate? Is it an attempt to score political points? It's not even close. 56% say it's an attempt to score political points. And I come back to the point that I often raise, which is that voters are not as stupid as people in Washington seem to think that they are. They understand what's going on here. Well, yes. I mean, it's pretty plain <laughs> and uh, insight. And, and not the first time that Congress has uh, formed a committee to just uh, have a political purpose, no doubt, but uh, the American people are hip to it. I mean, listen, this is part, we were talking in the last segment about uh, Joe Biden's good week on economic populism or what have you. The other part of the equation is just the contrast with what Republicans are doing. And so that also is working to the president's benefit right now, because when the Republican House majority, fresh off uh, its, yes, more limited victory perhaps than anticipated, puts this front and center as, as issue number one, not only do the American people clearly see it as political gamesmanship, it is, it is so far away from the actual things that the American people care about uh, that it means the Republicans are going to have to sort of make up ground here as they go forward. If that's right. I, I talked to a Representative Comer who is over the Oversight Committee, and I asked him, you know, a lot of Americans are going to deem these hearings as retaliation politics, and do you feel that way? Are you going to do anything about it? And he said uh, they make no apologies for making this part of their strategy. They believe investigating the president is important and bringing in uh, issues related to his family members. So to your point, I, I feel it's really striking, you know, as a Capitol Hill reporter to see them double down on this, knowing that the American people aren't really interested, knowing that over on the other side of the Capitol, senators are doing hearings on the Chinese surveillance balloon and other matters that Americans really want to tune in about. Uh, but right now, what we're seeing is the Republicans off to a little bit of a slower start on some of their plans, but yet they're not backing down. Yeah, I mean, it's... It is a little too transparent, and it also is so is in such contrast to when there's real work being done, to the real work that's being done in other parts of the Hill. One of the highlights, I'll put it, call it a highlight, of this week's hearings was conservatives trying to make this claim that social media was censoring them due to undue influence from people in the government. Just take a listen to uh, this exchange that happened between Congressman Maxwell Frost and one of the uh, Twitter uh, uh, witnesses in this hearing. Earlier, you testified about a 2019 tweet um, that was about President Trump. And I think it was from uh, Ms. Teagan. What was the tweet about? Please excuse my language. This is a direct quote. But Chrissy Teigen referred to Donald Trump as a pussy ass bitch. Okay. Free speech. And what happened after Ms. Teigen posted her tweet? What did the White House do? What did the Trump White House do? From my understanding, the White House reached out to ask that this tweet be removed. So this is all totally backfired in yeah. a spectacular fashion. I mean, it... Well, one part of... I remember talking to a, someone close to President Biden, and they were, I was asking them about the increased oversight that would happen from Congress. And what they were saying is, look, as long as we can keep proposing plans and frame the opposition as not being pragmatic, but not getting things done, then that, that's going to be our strategy going forward. 
this helps with that. This does help with that in a way. That being said, to say that there's not people that are nervous in the White House about some of the increased yeah. investigations, including maybe on immigration and potentially the Homeland Security Secretary being brought down. I wrote a story yeah. this week about uh, White House officials increasingly anxious about the time that it takes away from actually addressing real issues that are happening. I think those are, but I think they've, that's and a, they've I think hired different. lawyers yeah. to yes. deal with it. Yeah. But this is, I mean, the social media stuff is such a cul-de-sac yeah. uh, in all of this. Uh, I do want to get one more thing in here on a, a bit of a different topic. Sarah Huckabee Sanders gave the Republican response to Biden this week. And I just want to play real quick what she had to say. Most Americans simply want to live their lives in freedom and peace. But we are under attack in a left-wing culture war we didn't start and never wanted to fight. Every day we are told we must partake in their rituals, salute their flags, and worship their false idols. I, I, it, it, it just speaks to this question of what path is the Republican Party going to take here? They seem to be leaning into the culture war stuff, in addition to all of this sort of yeah. fringy conspiracy stuff on the, the social media platforms. These are appeals to the base. Um, Pew Research Center, which is really unparalleled, has terrific uh, mainstream large sample research, uh, just in the last couple of days put out an updated list of Americans' top policy priorities. Uh, strengthening the economy, number one, 75% say it's top priority. Uh, number two, reducing health care costs. That's why you see Biden leaning into insulin and some of these other discussions. Number three, defend against terrorism. That's why the border right. and the right. China spy plane uh, issues have such resonance. You got to get way down that list to get to two issues. Um, issues of race equity in America, that's 32%. That would be on the Democratic base side, I think. And the issue of parents having more control over things or parental issues down at 27%. The only major issue with lower interest than that is COVID. Here we are wow. in early 2023. Quite a lot about where so we are. Uh, these, are, these are issues that really appeal to the base when you're looking at what's left of the center or swing voters or the broadest base of Americans. It's the economy, it's healthcare, it's, it's protecting American national security.